Hi, I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. Welcome to our Extrication Minutes every Tuesday on Fire Engineering. This week we're going to talk about dash displacement and the importance of our relief cuts. We talked last week about slowing down for a more effective rescue. That's so important when we're talking about dash displacement. A couple of weeks ago, we discussed the dash tie down and how important it is to cut them when we want to get some extra room out of our dash displacement evolution. This week, we're going to talk about relief cuts. I was walking by a fire department the other day and I found some vehicles out in the parking lot that had been worked on in their extrication trainings. There was no one around, so I went over and took a look at the vehicles that they'd been working on. And I found this. It's a picture of a vehicle where dash displacement was attempted and a few inches were gained. But if you notice, they only cut the lower A-pillar and the A-pillar in the windshield area. The dash tie-downs remained intact and the upper rail remained intact. And it's an old school way of thinking that we don't need to cut that upper rail when we're doing dash displacement. But what we've found on scene and through our research is that with late model vehicle construction features, it's so important that we make complete relief cuts and we make all of the relief cuts necessary. Let's talk a little bit about the vehicle construction feature. So in a vehicle, what we're trying to move when we move a dashboard most of the time is all of the dash components with the steering column and the dashboard with the dash reinforcement bar and that upper rail a pillar area of the vehicle typically we're not trying to move the engine compartment and the suspension components although in some cases especially recovery operations we may want to move the engine compartment and the suspension components but in most cases, we just want to move that dashboard area of the vehicle. So let's talk about the upper rail and the lower rail. In the upper rail of a vehicle is connected to the lower rail, and it's usually connected through the strut tower. Now, the lower rail holds the engine and the suspension components of most passenger vehicles. The upper rail is simply a crumple zone to protect the occupants and to create structural member for the hood and the fender to link to. So when we're doing our dash displacement evolutions, we typically want to separate the upper rail from the lower rail before or windshield side of that strut tower. This is important because if we separate it on the bumper side of the strut tower, what we'll find is as we go to move the dash, the upper rail is still connected to the lower rail and the suspension components in the engine compartment are in the way of our movement. They hold us back from moving that dash off the occupant. But if we cut the upper rail in the area of the, of the windshield side of the strut tower, we can free the whole dashboard, the dash reinforcement bar, and all of the dash components from the engine and the suspension components, effectively making it easier to move that dash off the occupant. So something to look for at your next extrication assignment where dash displacement is required. If you can't make a cut between the strut tower and the windshield, the vehicle's probably not a good candidate for jacking the dash or lifting the dash. It's probably a better candidate for rolling the dash or pushing the dash with the ram. So take that into consideration when you're doing that size up on your vehicle. Always remove that front fender. It only takes a few seconds and then we can get to that upper rail, evaluate the location of the strut tower, and then make a good, solid, complete relief cut through that upper rail. Now, if we can't make a good, complete relief cut through the upper rail, it's better to get it in the wheel well area cut than it is up top. As the dash moves forward and up, it will pivot and open up in the wheel well location and bend easily on the top of the upper rail. 
With the lower rail, we may be making two cuts in the case of lifting or jacking the dash, or we may be just making one cut if we are rolling or ramming the dash. Either way, that bottom cut needs to be complete. We want to cut all the way through that lower A pillar, all the way to the firewall. And the reason for this is most late model vehicles are built with extremely strong connections in that area, and we want to separate that completely. This will avoid a lot of the common mistakes that we see where we have lower A pillar crumpling or limited dash movement. A big deep cut isn't enough. We want to go all the way. It usually takes two cuts with your cutter and taking that time is going to create a more efficient rescue for you. On our upper A pillar in the area of the windshield, we want to make sure that we double cut this area. The reason for that is as the dash moves up and forward, it may bind on a single cut, limiting again the movement that we get out of our dashboard. As we know from doing extrication at scene, things are a little different at the incident than they are in the junkyard. What we're going to find at the incident usually is the tire will be shoved up on the firewall underneath the vehicle's floor pan or even off of the vehicle or off to the side of the vehicle. The upper rail may be crumpled down and may create some issues when we're trying to cut in between the strut tower and the windshield. In these cases, take your time. A sawzall is usually an effective tool for the upper rail when the crumple is so bad that we can't get our cutters into place. So let's make complete relief cuts at our dash displacement assignments. It'll save us time. Hey, thanks for making us a part of your weekly training. I'm Brock Archer with Advanced Extrication. Take care. Be safe.